letters from home. Each day, millions of them are sent to American servicemen fighting on distant battlefronts. Because of a war postal system called V-Mail, they can be flown throughout the world, reaching distant points safely and with amazing speed. This plane is landing in Italy. Each bag of mail it carries contains 136,000 letters. Back in America, each letter was reduced to a tiny strip of film. Now near the front, automatic machines enlarge each overseas letter from 16 millimeter motion picture negative to a four by five inch print. These strips are dried, carefully inspected and cut into individual letters. Machines fold them and put them into envelopes. In this one laboratory, over 300,000 letters a day are handled. A complete locator card system takes care of mail incorrectly addressed. In the censorship section, anything that might reveal vital military information is cut out. Americans overseas receive their letters. Nearly every transport plane that spans the ocean brings its quota of mail. In just a few days, V-mail letters from home reach servicemen in every theater of war. Walla Walla, Washington, American farmers harvest a record crop of wheat, food of vital importance to the United Nations war effort. Most of this grain, cut, threshed, and bagged at amazing speed, will be sent abroad to the Allied fighting fronts throughout the world. carrier, aptly called the mobile machine gun nest, proves its ability at an army testing ground. Its low silhouette enables it to dash over hill and dale and across battle zones being swept by enemy shell fire. Ditches and soggy swamps can't stop or even slow the carrier. Easily controlled, it can swing around at almost no space at all. Designed for frontline duty to carry machine gun and mortar crews into battle, it is now in mass production in American factories. Through mass production methods, America is continually increasing its output of penicillin, the new drug that affects almost miraculous cures. The liquid medium in these bottles will grow the mold that forms penicillin. First, however, the liquid is purified by sterilization in great ovens. After sterilization, the medium is carefully inoculated with the seeds of the penicillin mold. The next step is incubation. Slowly, the mold that contains the precious drug forms in the bottles. All penicillin produced is used by the Allied fighting forces. The liquid now charged with penicillin is poured from the bottles. Turned into a powder, it is ready for use. On the second day of the 28th Democratic National Convention, held in the huge Chicago Stadium, Alvin Barkley, Senate Majority Leader, proposes a candidate for the presidency of the United States. Sent to this convention for the office of President of these United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The name of Franklin Roosevelt is once more before a Democratic convention. By a ballot of all the delegates, he is renominated by an overwhelming majority. In the coming election, Roosevelt will run against Thomas Dewey, the candidate of the Republican Party. That night, from his special train at a Pacific Coast naval base, President Franklin Roosevelt, 
again chosen to run for America's highest office, speaks by radio to the Democratic Convention meeting half a continent away. I have already indicated to you why I accept the nomination which you have offered me, in spite of my desire to retire to the quiet of private life. You in this convention are aware of what I have sought to gain for the nation, and you have asked me to continue. We all know how truly the world has become one. Think, think that if Germany and Japan, for example, were to come through this war with their philosophies established, their present philosophies, and their armies intact, our own grandchildren would again have to be fighting in their day for their liberties and their lives. What is the job before us in 1944? First, to win the war, to win it fast, to win it overwhelmingly. Secondly, to form worldwide international organizations and to arrange to use the armed forces of the sovereign nations of the world to make another world war impossible within the foreseeable future. And third, to build an economy for our returning veterans and for all Americans, which will provide employment and decent standards of living.